Hello, my name is Jamila Vargas, and I'm going to be speaking on the history of boating in New England and how boating has transformed from a working community to recreation and relaxation, along with how the boating industry gave rise to immigration from all over the world to New England. Enjoy the show. The history of boating in New England has changed drastically over time. It began in the year of 1620 with the arrival of the Pilgrims in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Their arrival made it so that the coast became the site of defensive forts as well as the home base for commerce, fishing, whaling, and shipbuilding industries. New England is a region collected of six states and which are located in the northeastern part of the United States. Jobs in our boating industry gave rise to immigration from Europe, Asia, Africa, and different areas of America. One massive culture which arrived to New England were the Cape Verdeans from the islands of Cape Verde. Cape Verde is an island country of 10 volcanic islands in the Central Atlantic Ocean off the northwest coast of Africa. An estimate of about 16,000 people of Cape Verdean descent live in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Some of the other communities that they resided in in the New England area were Fall River, Massachusetts, Providence and Pawtucket, Rhode Island, Bridgeport and New Haven, Connecticut. For three centuries, Cape Verde had struggled with reoccurring droughts as well as famine. This situation, along with a link to America's 19th century whaling industry, is what accounts for as many ethnic Cape Verdeans in the United States as on the islands themselves. With the many jobs related to boating comes the famous American ship owner, merchant, and Pan-Africanist named Paul Cuffey. During the American Revolution, he served on a privateer and often participated in running American supplies through British blockades. Paul and his brother-in-law, Michael Wainer, after the war came to an end, opened a shipyard in Westport, Massachusetts. They built large vessels, including two names of the Hero and the Alpha. He and various relatives manned the ships and went on long whaling expeditions. Boating history in New England was a huge deal and is basically what makes New England, New England. Many states took it upon themselves to have museums dedicated to the past events, like the New Bedford Whaling Museum located in New Bedford, Massachusetts, and the Submarine Force Library and Museum in Groton, Connecticut. Lots of changes occurred within America, especially in New England. Sailing has become a sport along with many other things. Although some boats are still being used for work, the majority of people see boating for entertainment and fun purposes. For example, lots of our boats now are being used for exciting activities like relaxation, water skiing, whale watching, kayaking, and canoeing. Cruise ships even hold fun activities on board when the passengers aren't off the boat. Some cruises have libraries in them so that you can enjoy reading while being over the water. There are even arcades, spas, some have gyms and hold events like karaoke. There are even clubs dedicated to boating like the Low Tide Yacht Club. The club provides sailing lessons to the general public and participate in racing as well. New Bedford Community Boating is a program that also gives classes to have fun on the water and to learn or build upon the basics of sailing. Downtown New Bedford also holds something called the Harbor Tour where many tourists have the wonderful opportunity to see commercial fishing fleet, Fort Phoenix, and hear tales of New Bedford stories past. It is also a very educational journey, bringing all of its passengers to view the largest historical hurricane barriers on the East Coast and informing them on scalloping and fishing in the area. All types of unique people from around the world come and sail on the Harbor Tour boat, including women, which is a very huge difference in time since there was once a moment in history where women weren't even allowed on boats. Women are also joining rowing competitions as a sport. Today, women rowing is one of the sports that have successfully made it to the Olympics. Plenty of colleges also look into talented female athletes and sometimes hand out scholarships to hardworking and very skilled individuals, giving them chances of competing in college rowing. It also became an NCAA sport in the year of 1997. As a woman that resides in New England, I am extremely thankful for all of the changes that have occurred before my time. If it weren't for the changes, I wouldn't have been able to travel from New Bedford, Massachusetts 
to Martha's Vineyard and neither would all of my friends that joined along with me on the trip. Being overseas is an extremely lovely experience that holds many adventures and makes it one of the many great ways to sit back and connect to nature.